So today we are actually going to look at the various or the popular interview questions for healthcare assistants in Ireland. I've had a lot of people that have been very successful with interviews and they've also shared their interview questions and I think there are some few ones that are very common okay so I felt like why not just compile all these questions and then share with my viewers just to help all those looking at that route okay so that in case you are coming in or you have an interview then you are sure to know that you're going to pass so stay tuned please remember i'm not going to actually tell you what to say okay it's just going to be about the questions and some of the things that you might want to talk about okay some of them i'm just going to mention the questions like that and then i'll also share some few questions on my screen just to help you all know the common questions that usually comes around So definitely you'll be trying different companies okay you'll be throwing your CVs around and then definitely one day I know you're going to get an interview when you are successful at getting an interview it's important that you read on the company read about the service read about what they do the number of beds they have their mission their vision their future goal is so at least definitely I'm going to ask you that you tell them more about the company or why you actually want to join them and then what you want to actually bring on board so that they make sure that your goals actually aligns with the Yes, it's very important that you take note of this before you actually sit for that interview. At least go through their website and then find out some things about them, like their social media. Now, most of these healthcare services they actually have Facebook and other social media platforms on LinkedIn and all of that. Try to read a few bits about them so that you be abreast with the company that you actually want to start working with. And then the next thing is that I'll say that you know that you actually sent your CV to them. So you should know a bit more about your CV. Some people just pick some few things all over the internet and then they just put in, they don't even remember anything in their CV. So that is not correct. You should at least glance through your CV just to make sure about some of the things that you actually wrote down. So when you're asked, you don't find yourself fumbling. It should look like, yes, this is about you that you've actually sold out to them. So you don't have to fumble when they ask you about any information at all on the CV. Those are the major things you shouldn't at least play at all with. Okay, you should be very much abrasive in this aspect okay and then the next thing i'm also going to talk about is you knowing your strength and also your weakness so most people have been asked about your strength what are some of your strengths where you can mention about teamwork you know dedicated a whole lot you have a lot of things that you can actually talk about when it comes to your strength and then you can also ask about your weakness so you can talk about a few things maybe you want things to be done in a perfect way and all of that those things can be your weakness you should be able to at least have some few points down for your weakness and also for your strength okay and i think i already mentioned this by you being able to know what you can actually bring on the table like when you join the company some of the things that you know that when you join you'll be able to bring in some new ideas and all of that you might think that is just a support worker or healthcare assistant interview so all these things are not important maybe it might be for nurse no all those things were actually asked okay so the, the experience i have so you should be able to know this such things as well next is that you should know the role of a care worker or healthcare assistant okay you want to tell them that i want to join your company and be a support worker or a healthcare assistant when they ask you that what are some of the roles of a healthcare assistant you shouldn't fumble at all you should be able to mention all of this i'm not going to mention all of those things for people to start diving and say exactly you should know you know when it comes to a home country like let's say from ghana and africa sometimes we have healthcare assistants even checking vital signs and all of that here they don't even do it unless those who are in the nursing colleges okay they usually do those things you don't talk about selling medications because you are not a nurse definitely you are not going to do that we have a lot of bedside care that you actually give changing parts and all of that supporting the patients you've been going for a walk you know you have a lot of social activities feeding them and a whole lot of things that's available so you should be able to know all the list of the role of the care worker in ireland you should be able to get abreast with that so i have a few questions i'll just be sharing okay you might be asked about how you really stress okay so maybe you are stressed at home when you come to work how do you release that stress does it affect your work and all of that and an instance you might even be asked to give a scenario where you were very stressed back home and when you got to work what did you do or when you are very stressed what do you particularly do okay so you should be able to think about such situations that you've gone through whilst you are at the health sector back home what you actually did and what would be the best thing that you would do so that when you are asked such questions you don't fumble at all okay and then you might also be asked about how you motivate yourself and then how will you also communicate with a client who cannot speak okay so you should have all the options if you know sign language that's fine you can equally write on the book as well 
you can also give the, the client different options for them to choose from all those things are uh, different ways that you can actually communicate to your clients and then i also be asked about confidentiality so that is also important the next thing is they'll be asking you about safeguarding which is very important because we've had a lot of abuses we've had a lot of documentary about abuses in the uk in many other parts of the world okay so safeguarding is a very important aspect in the interview so you may be asked the different types of abuse the physical the emotional the you know the financial abuse yeah, there are lots of abuses so you should be able to be abreast in, in that situation sometimes they might not even come forward to you and then ask you give us the type of abuse they might even give you a scenario and then ask you the type of abuse just so that they are sure that you know the types of abuse when it comes to safeguarding issue i'll say that it should be on your priority list you should be able to know what to do in an instance where you observe any colleague abusing any patients okay they might ask you what you would do in such instance how you'll be able to realize the different types of abuse it's important maybe you've approached a patient you could see marks on the patient the patient telling you this just after a colleague attending to the patient what would you do in that instance okay so you should be able to know what you do how to escape late what to report to okay in such instances will you keep quiet and all of that those things are very important and then you should also know about falls in an instance where you observe that a patient has fallen that what would you do or has had a fall what would you do okay those procedures are very important and then throughout the interview you should know that the most important thing okay is that you should prioritize your patient when answering any of the questions try and then prioritize your patient every answer at all should go in favor of a patient so you should be able to state that in whatever that you do, you make sure that whatever care you, you give would be to the best interest of your patient. So this is very important for you to actually state. And then when it comes to force, you might even be asked about how you can prevent force. So there are different ways of preventing falls. Okay, whilst doing that, you should be able to also ensure that you are not restricting the patient, but you also have restrictive practice. Okay, so that was also a different thing I also talk about. So the different ways that you can also prevent a fall, look at that, try to learn around that, which is very, very important. So I'll say that when it comes to safeguarding, it should be number one on your list. When it comes to falls, it should be another one on your list. Okay, I've spoken a lot about safeguarding, no abuse and all of that. I've actually spoken a lot about that and also the falls is equally important. What would you do when you find that how that patient has had a fall and then how you can prevent such instances is very important and how to also escalate the situation who you are going to inform because maybe you might not have the right skills on what to do but you should know that you'll be able to inform the nurse on duty or nurse in charge on duty so those things should be on your finger you should be able to know what to say in an instance where you are asked on about such situations okay yes and then you should be able to also communicate to the patient so the next thing is that they might also ask you about confidentiality because in a broad all in healthcare for confidentiality is very important okay so you should be able to tell them about confidentiality give an example where you've actually maintained whilst you were performing your duty i had someone that was actually asked that assuming that you are a domiciliary care worker and then maybe you go to a client's house and then maybe a neighbor asks you that oh, who are you what do you want the neighbor's sake or something like that they're actually trying to find out some information about the patient so you should be able to maintain you know keep mute okay make sure that you maintain the privacy of the patient as much as possible if you have any card you can just show that or anything but make sure that you don't give any information about the patient out and then in an instance where even a relative even approaches you to even ask you about some information about the patient okay you should be sure that that relative is someone that the client has actually chosen you should be able to make sure that that relative is the person that the client has actually chosen as the next of kin okay so if the person is the next of kin then you know that you have the authority or you have the permission of the patient to give some information out so you try as much as possible to be very discreet in your care and then make sure that whatever you do would be for the benefit of the patient so a colleague was also asked about the six c's of care she kind of fumbled a bit during the interview thankfully she passed so i was like definitely have to share this as well with my viewers okay so i did a bit of research on this so with the six c's we have care compassion competence we have communication we have courage and then commitment and she was asked about the most important in this six 
I would say that this solely depends on an individual, okay? Someone might say that it's care, someone might say it's communication, someone might say it's commitment. So far as you are able to actually defend your answer, that is the most important thing. Let's just look at this, okay? So when asked which of this is the most important, it's important to understand that all the six C's are interconnected and equally vital in delivery, holistic and centered care. However, care is often considered the foundation of the other values, okay? Without genuine care, the other components such as compassion, competence, and communication might not be effectively realized. Care is what drives healthcare professionals to provide the best possible service, okay? Ensuring patients' needs are met and their dignity is upheld. Opinions may vary depending on the context of our individual perspective. Some might argue that compassion is the most crucial as it directly impacts the emotional and psychological well-being of patients. Others might also emphasize their communication as the most crucial, as this ensures that all aspects of care are understood and properly executed. So obviously the importance of each C can shift depending on the situation and specific need of the patient. So that's what I just said. So it all depends on how you are able to actually defend yourself or defend your point. But I would say that care is definitely the most important one because that actually drives you in communication and in commitment and what have you. So that is very important. Now let's look at the other point. So you might be asked about what is a person-centered care. As I said earlier on, it's very important that whatever answer at all that you give is actually focused on the patient. Okay, make sure that whatever answer at all you give kind of benefit is going to be of great benefit to the patient. So self-centered care is actually all focusing on your client. Okay, making sure that you give them the best of care. Okay, so the individuals as the center of all care decisions. Okay, so it means that not only involving them in the care planning process, but also tailoring the care provided to their unique needs, goals, and then preference is very important. Okay, so you have to be sure to express during your interview that you have recognized that providing care is not about doing everything for your clients. But it also means supporting their independence by encouraging them to do as much as they are willing to be able to do for themselves. Okay, so you should be able to give example if possible in such situations as well. This is very important. And then I'll say that they might be able to even ask you about your availability in some cases where you come in Ireland or you finally arrive, you are available. What do you actually want to do? Would you want to work nights or even work days, you know, or weekends and all of that? If you have any preference, that is the opportunity for you to tell them. You don't tell them that, oh, I'm okay with everything, I'm good, don't worry. And then when you come in, you tell them that I'm not very good with nights. Be able to communicate your preference to them, if I'll say. And then if they have anything to tell you, definitely they'll tell you. I know that most of us are kind of afraid. What if I don't see the right thing? They tell me that, oh, because I'm not available for night, so they are not going to select me. I think that most employers are looking for trustworthy people, people that are very confident, okay? So you've been able to tell them what it is, know that, okay, this person is very confident. And then even though you're working under pressure or at that moment, you are having an interview, you are very pressured, but you are able to still communicate your needs and then also tell them what you actually prefer, okay? It shows that you are someone that you can actually work under pressure as well. So it's very good. So now let's look at some other questions that might also come up during an interview, okay? So I'll just show this slowly for you to just go through. If possible, you can pause, go through each and every question. If you have any comment or any question about any of them, you can also post it under this video as well. So let's have a look. So those are questions that I just displayed on my screen to help you all on some questions that you should expect, okay, for healthcare assistants interview questions or care workers interview questions. It might not be all, but I just tried my best to bring you all as much as possible. Definitely, you might have some of these questions being asked during an interview. If you think that this video has been of great benefit, remember to like and also support your girl by dropping a comment. If you have any questions at all, why not just drop it? If I have the answer, definitely I'll reply to that as well. If you have any other question that maybe you've already had an interview that maybe I did not really talk about or you just want to bring my attention to anything, why not also 
remember to drop it under this video as well thank you all so much for always helping me and guess what we are six thousand subscribers in this family thank you guys so much it's so great i think even over six thousand i'm so grateful i thank you guys so much for always supporting me i'm really excited about that and i hope to do my best okay see you all soon on my next video and remember to share bye